Hello everyone, uh, my name is Han Si, and today I will, I will introduce our full paper, Scalable and Effective Generative Information Retrieval, which is a joint work with Chen Luo, Bo Wenjing, Sheikh, Tianjin Wei, and Hamid Zamani. So, sorry. So first of all, I will introduce why is a generative retrieval, generative retrieval. So generative retrieval is a new paradigm of the document retrieval. It represents each document as a unique docu document identifier, term as document ID, and it has the ritual task as a sequential generation task. The encoder decoder, decoder is trained to gener generate relevant document IDs by the constraint being search. You can see uh, this figure to illustrate. Uh, allows its elegant design and the potential benefit to end-to-end -to -end training with a downstream NLP tasks such as uh, uh, open domain question answering. The generated retrieval's performance on a large scale IR data sets such as MS Marco, uh, that, uh, MS Marco that contains 8.8 .8 million uh, patches still uh, perform worse than the state of the art dense retrieval models as shown in this, uh, in the pa in this paper. So uh, in, in this work, we first to, we, we believe that uh, uh, the current GR models overlook two fundamental designs that that make this a uh, bad performance. First, it's uh, based about the ranking organization, and the second is about uh, document document ID initializations for the generative retrieval. And in this paper, uh, we propose the framework called Report. Now it's based on these two often uh, often overlooked fundamental designs. And and then and then we and then we uh, we propose these uh, two uh, components. The first is a uh, Preface oriented ranking optimization, and the second is the reference based document ID initialization to solve uh, the above two, two problems uh, respectively. Uh, so, first of all, to better understand uh, why we need this prefix oriented optimization for GR models, I will first illustrate how GR model generate or they say retrieve the relevant documents. So. We can see the uh, we can see this uh, figure. So first of all, uh, given a query, the GR model will take the initial token C0 to generate the next token C1, and then based on the C0 and the C1, it will generate the next token C2, and, and so forth so on, till it uh, generate the full length token ID. So as we can see, it's a uh, uh, sequential search algorithms that generate tokens autoregressively from left to right. And we can use the constraint bin search to generate the top K probable token ID space on this sequential search, uh, generation process. And due to the nature of the sequential decoding, even we can assign a high score to the relevant for length token ID. If its prefix cannot be assigned a high score to, it might be discard. So this, this prefix or this token IDs might be discarded in the early decoding steps because one, bin search is the approximate search algorithm. It can only keep the top K probable prefixes. And second, each token ID is a unique sequence. Uh, if the prefixes of the sequence are discarded, that means that the document, the document ID, the following sequence are also be discarded, right? So and this is the fundamental difference between the generated retrieval and the dense retrieval, because for the generated retrieval models, the final relevant scores is the summation of the tokens of document IDs. But for dense, dense retrieval models, each document only has one representation, hence it won't face the problem of this sequential search. And what I'm trying to say here is that we cannot blindly use the existing learning to run algorithm from the, they say, dense retrieval literature or other learning to run literature. We should design a suitable ranking objective for the GR models that have this unique sequential search process. And to achieve this, we propose the prefix uh, oriented ranking optimization for GR models. The idea is very simple. And uh, it's illustrated in the figure. Assume we have a query and the relevant document ID, which is a positive document ID and a negative, negative document ID. And then our objective is that we want that every prefix at each step of the relevant document IDs can be assigned with higher score than those irrelevant, irrelevant prefixes of uh, than those prefixes of the irrelevant document IDs given a query. 
And to achieve this, we propose a, a knowledge, knowledge distillation based pairwise loss algorithm. I actually, you can use a non pairwise, non knowledge distillation loss, but I use knowledge distillation loss here because uh, from literature, we know that the teacher scores can give us very good ranking signals and always can boost the ratio performance. And this pairwise loss is motivated by the margin MSC loss. The, the idea of loss is that uh, we want the student margin. I mean, student margin, I, I will explain what the student margin and the uh, teacher margin later. We want the student margin as close as to the teacher margin. And the teacher margin, actually T is the teacher margin. Teacher margin, uh, it's that uh, it's compute based on uh, we we it, it, it's compute based on this way. So uh, we have so it's so we have the relevant scores of the query and the relevant document IDs, and then we can minus these scores uh, with the scores of the document and uh, with, with the query and the uh, irrelevant document IDs. So this this mi this minus things it's a uh, 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 the margin and it's a margin it's a teacher margin, and similarly we can opt uh. And similarly, we can also uh, go the student margin, right? The, we can also use a generated, generated retrieval to compute this student margin. It, it, it's a relevant scores. It's a positive relevant scores minus negative negative scores. And so in this in these settings, for each step i, we want the this is a, a student positive. Uh, this is a positive margin of sorry. This is a, a this is a pot student margin of the pre of the prefix i minus the teacher margin t and multiply a, a a coefficient alpha i and the alpha i it's a concave function that range from zero to one so we use here and we use the alpha i just to reweight the margin for each step i because we want uh, and uh. And because we want uh, alpha i gradually increase, and also when alpha i equals l, l is the final length, we want alpha i equals one. So the alpha i just to reweigh the teacher margin to make sure that uh, uh, the different prefix can be assigned with like different uh, the properly scores. And l and, mm, and because like uh, we want uh, every prefix because we want every prefix. Uh, to have the correct ranking, our final loss should say like multi-objective loss. It's multi. It's multi-test learning loss. Choose, choose it, uh, the summation of the just to consider all the all the like all the rank look all this uh, ranking loss as at each step, at every step i. Oh, sorry, and yeah. And other than the preface oriented uh, uh, optimization uh, algorithm, uh, the document ID is also an important factor because uh, in any in, in most of the generative retrieval models, uh, the these models usually use a two-step op optimization approach. So, firstly, it will use a external method to construct document IDs, and second, the model is fine-tuned with these fixed document IDs. So. If you have a good document like this that can capture the relationships between document nicely, then your model would have very good would have good performance. If not, the points will be bad, right? But the question is that what are the good document like this? And we argue that the, the good document like this should satisfy like two properties. First is that it can it should capture the relevant space document like this similarity between uh, between documents because we are doing the retrieval task. And the second is that these document IDs should capture the hierarchical structure of documents, like from the coarse gradient to the fine gradient, because we apply the uh, bean search algorithm, right? It's also like from left to right sequentially. So uh, that's the two things we should satisfy. And to satisfy these two things, uh, we first trade the GR model as a dense encoder. To obtain the relevant space orientation, you can see the the the, the figure A, the 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 the, the figure A just how 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 we trade the uh, generational as a dense encoder model, and then and then after we have the uh, document representations for each document, uh, we can apply the residual condensation algorithm to assign the document IDs. <coughs> 
we use the result condition instead of other quantization pro uh, other quantization algorithms such as product quantization because residual condition contrasts uh, each new token based on the previous tokens, which means that it can somehow capture the hierarchical structures. But for a product quantization, they 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 control uh, each token independently. They can uh, it means that they cannot uh, capture these hierarchical things. And this is a whole training pipeline that's based on these two novel components. And you can refer the paper for more details. And for results, and we evaluate our model on the standard MS Markov benchmark that contains 8.8 .8 million passages. We have observed that report, our proposed model, uh, outperforms the previous state-of-the-art JAR models, let's say LTR JAR by 30% in terms of the MR10 on MSR code development set. Also, if you check the performance of the report with uh, other density short baselines, you can, you can see uh, we can achieve uh, very competitive results. And from the aberration study, we found that prefix-oriented uh, prefix optimization is important. Uh, you can see the, uh, you can see this line, the first line. So, if we if we don't use these uh, prefix optimizations, then the MR10 will drop from 0.33 to 0.280. And also the document ID initialization is important. Uh, we can see the last two line, last two rows. If we replace the train density encoder with sentence T5, meaning that we don't capture these relevant space relations or relationships of documents, the performance will drop drop to the point 0.192. And if we replace the RQ with PQ, meaning that we don't capture the hierarchical structure of documents, then the performance will drop to 0.112. We also uh, qualitatively evaluate the quality of the document IDs with different length. So uh, in our setting, each document contains uh, 30 documents. And from and we do this series by uh we sample 20 queries from the track deal track deal data sets and the documents that uh that have that relevant to the same queries because each uh, each query might have like multiple documents that relevant to it. All of these documents that have the same relevancy will be assigned with the same color. And for this figure. Uh, each point it's a document and different color means that whether they have the same relevancies. And then we just uh, uh, draw the document IDs with, with prefix lens from 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 30. And from the figure, we can first of all say, uh, even though the prefix lens is 1, the, cl the clustering quality is not that bad because we can still see uh, the points that have the same color cluster nicely. And then if we increase the prefix length, the quality will become better and better. And uh, uh, in the end, if the prefix length is 32, then we can see the, the class is pretty good, means that uh, uh, our document IDs can capture the reference, reference based semantics between documents. Otherwise, how can this, uh, uh, documents that have the uh, same, uh, same relevancy be clustered together. And, fin and, and, the final, uh, and, for the fi and finally, uh, for the analysis, so that figure uh, shows the different settings of the document IDs. So such as uh, what's the length of the document IDs. So we, other than original setting 32, we use 4, 16, and 8. And also- Can you uh, start wrap wrapping up? So that we are... Okay, okay, sure. Is this the final slide? Okay. So, uh, and also, uh, the other setting is uh, what's about carry size for each, uh, each position. And the right figure is uh, uh, different uh, variants of the draft models. Uh, the blue line is a uh, report, and the orange line is a uh, report without using the previous already organization, and the red line is a uh, uh, it's a report like re we replace the uh, dense encoder with a T5 uh, sentence T5 and the green line it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, we replace the result condition with the product condition. So first of all, we can find that if we can uh, in, 
you can increase the prefix length, the performance are uh, always increased. And second is that uh, we find uh, like use the three use our setting. It's the best setting compared to others. Yeah, this is two two findings we have. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I finished my presentation.